Dale Velvet Rose from Velvet Rose's Pinup Dressing Room. And today, you, everybody knows that I'm a petrol head because I run my garage sections when I run the pinup comps at the car shows and we have guess your car part and so forth. But today, I'm actually going to do the first part in some motor maintenance videos. And of course, I'm doing it on my VY Ute, Commodore Ute, but you should check with your mechanic or whoever you get to help you with your car stuff. If you want to do it yourself, you should check with them and get some lessons on what you need for your car. So this might not suit your car and it might not suit all VY Commodores or whatever. But this is what I do with my car. So today what we're going, we're going to be doing a few things. We bought a, I didn't go to Spotlight today. <laughs> I went to Super Cheap today and I bought um, all the parts that I need that we'll be doing as a full service going along and we'll be doing an oil change. I've got an oil filter and I've also got um, some coolant to put in my radiator and I've also got my spark plugs as well. So now today what I've got is we're going to do the spark plugs now. So this is the first episode of um, Pin Up Garage. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> So what we're going to do today is to do like spark plugs. So these are my plugs that I've got. They're NGK plugs and they're special ones specifically for my engine and my model of Commodore. So you need to get the right ones because you can't have different ones because it depends on the heat that comes out of the plug and so forth. And you have different ones that are platinum and different ones that are iridium and it just depends it depends, and yeah, longer and shorter ones, and some have hotter tips and all of that sort of stuff. The Camaro, our other car, has a hotter tip so it can burn hotter and so forth, but these ones are just the standard ones that came when it was built. And I find that they actually work better even when I race. I had iridiums in them, but it didn't seem to run as good. So today we're also going to use a spark plug gapper. And what we're going to do today is that you have to check the electrode on the end of the spark plug, which you'll see us do in a little while when we're doing it. And you have to check to make sure it's not too wide or not too skinny because then the um, spark won't jump far enough and so forth. So it depends on which gap you need as to which little part on this um, spark plug gapper it is. And this is actually um, a vintage spark plug gapper and it's been around for quite a while. And we'll also use a spark plug socket and a ratchet and it's an extension ratchet because we'll need that to get in a bit deeper past my um, extractors and so forth on my car and it makes it a bit easier to get in there because, um, yeah, getting past all the bits and pieces. And you also make sure that your car's not hot when you do it, otherwise all of the bits and pieces like your pipes and so forth will be hot. And we also have this speed brace that we can use to actually make it go a bit faster because it's easier with the bend in it to make things happen a bit quicker when we're working on the spark plugs. So we're about to move to the garage now and up to my VYU and we'll do a bit of spark plug work. Thanks. Here we are at my VY Commodore Ute. Um, today we're actually, as I said, we're going to do spark plugs. Uh, so I've actually put like this little cover on my guard so that my belt doesn't, or my buttons don't catch on the, and scrape my paint because my paint is really good for the age of the car. It's a 2004 model Commodore. Um, so what we're going to do is do the spark plugs on the passenger side of the car first. And because we've got this big air box in the road, we have to get that out of the road first. So what I'm going to do is we'll pull out the sensor plug that actually tells um, the computer in the car whether it's running cold or hot air happening so that it can put the choke on and change the fuel mixtures and so forth. So we'll take that plug out. It has like a little tang on it that you pull back and pull out. So the next thing we'll do is we'll take one of the, this hose clip off here so that we can actually pull the box back a bit. So we just wind that out a bit. You don't need to pull the whole screw out. You just need to loosen it 
so that you can get the hose clip loose and pull that off. And now what we actually have to do is to unclip the little clips on the airbox lid. And you don't have to take the whole airbox out, just the lid and the assembly that goes into the throttle body. I think there's, oh no, there's not one over there. And you can just lift it up like that. And now hopefully, yes, yay! The whole airbox lid comes off. Yay, I got it all right. <laughs> and we'll pop it over there, so hopefully we won't trip over it. And in here is actually, we can check out the, oil, the air filter while we're in here. And this is actually my K&N um, air filter. So I don't replace that. I actually give it a wash and an oil so that it keeps it clean and so forth. But yeah, it's more expensive than a normal air filter but it actually gives my um, car a bit more air into it and yeah, I get to keep it for um, thousands of kilometres. So I'll just pop it back in there for the minute, but we'll give it a bit of a bath. Maybe we'll do that in another episode. Okay, so what we're going to do now is to pull the leads off, because you have to pull the leads off and some of these are a bit stiff on um, the Commodores because they've got springs in them. Dale's having trouble already. I'll start with the back one first. Oh, oh, got it. And the second one. And you try and keep them in order because if you have them in the wrong order, you'll end up with your car misfiring. And that'll be no good. Because it'll be no good if it's firing on a different cylinder at the time to what the computer thinks it should be firing on. This one's a really stiff one. Oh, got it. Okay. So now, oh, and we lose our side cover. So now we actually get our spark plug socket. And we've actually only got a short extension. When we did the initial video um, introduction, we actually thought we'd need a longer one. But that's more for like than we do the Camaro. So now we've got the short one. So we'll actually put this on the first spark plug. You've got to be careful that you get it down as far as you need to because you don't want to have it on the porcelain, otherwise you'll break it off and then it'll be stuck in the block and that'll be no good. So we're actually going to pull it towards um, the front, towards my left, because if you do it the other way, you'll end up with it getting on tighter and that'll be no good either. Actually, I think it might be slipping. Now I've got it. First, I felt it slipping, so it wasn't on the actual bottom of the spark plug properly. So I'm actually using the little ratchet to make it go backwards and forwards and unwind it so I don't have to go round and round and round if I was using a traditional spanner should be able to now and you try and get it out without dropping it dropping it under the car Both. socket and extension together yeah. <laughs> so that's my first spark plug that I'll get out and you can see how it's a bit burnt around the ends and you can see the electrodes, not too bad, but it's not real good. <clears throat> Do you want to stop it for a minute? Got three dead clog, clogs, clogs, <laughs> can't get my tongue working now. Plugs out of the passenger side of the car. So um, we're about to now put the new plug in, which I'm about to get out of the box. I'll just put them down there. And what we have to do first is to check what part, spark plug gap we need. Now, I actually have, for the car head that I am, I actually have like a manual for my car and it actually tells me in there what the spark plug gap is. And But if you don't have that, you actually can see it on the sticker on here on the bonnet. It says, um, 3.8 litre V6 
and it even tells you what spark plugs to put in it and it's 1.5 um, millimeter spark plug gap with a minus 0.1 okay so that's the gap we'll be looking at and what it talks about with a spark plug gap I'm just grabbing it out of the box here is actually the gap in here in between the electrode and I don't know what that's called but the end of the spark plug will do <laughs> and that's how far the little spark jumps okay so what we're going to do is we'll grab our spark plug feeler gauge and we'll have a look on here and try and find something closest to the 1.5. I have a 1.52 on there but um, you shouldn't gap it that far because it's only telling us we only have 0.1 allowance. So we'll go to the next one down which is 1.37 and what we'll do with that is we'll use that to actually work out what our gap is because as the spark plug gets older the electrode burns down and makes the gap wider. So what we do is we poke it in here like this, like that and we can actually see that it's not really a tight fit but if we actually went to the 1.52 one it actually won't go in. So it's probably not a bad fit there because we've got the 0.37 one that goes in easy and the 1.52 won't go in at all. So we're probably pretty close to the 1.5 millimeter, which is what the factory setting is and what it, they should have come in anyway. But you're always checking in case they've got dropped or something like that in transport and they've got a bit squashed. Okay, so what we're going to do is we'll come over to the car and we'll do the same procedure but first you put it in um, by hand to get it going in the right way and you'll be careful that you don't drop it because if you drop it you'll probably snap the porcelain on the end and that means your spark plug's pretty much dead or you'll actually drop it on its point and then you'll have to gap the plug again. Okay so we'll pop it in the first cylinder first, try and find a little spot. And this time you'll do it up to the right, towards the windscreen of the car. And you don't force it, you just work it in there because you don't want to cross thread it because that'll be no good either because you'll have it stuck in your block. Okay, so then we get our, first I'll just work it with the actual extension and the socket on there. And we'll just get it on there. Come on, little spark plug. Okay. I think it's on far enough because you don't also want it half hanging off either because then you might break the porcelain on the end as well. And that won't be any good either. <coughs> so then I'll put my little spark plug ratchet on there, or socket ratchet, I should say, not spark plug ratchet. Oops. And I'll work it around to the right. But you've got to make sure you have it going the right way, otherwise when you come back again, it'll be undoing what you've already done up. And I think that's what it's doing. <laughs> So you've got to make sure you click the little ratchet to have it go the other way. Oops. Doesn't seem like it's actually on right. finish this I'll get Mr Noel to just check to make sure they're tight enough before I put my leads on and so forth. So I'll go on and do the other two and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to do the others and put your leads back on and so forth. Okay? Now we've put all of the um, spark plugs in the passenger side now. They're all in there and Mr Noel's double checked them to make sure they're all tight enough. 
And of course, you don't do anything like this without your car actually having its handbrake on, making sure that it's not going to roll away, making sure the engine is cool. It's been sitting for like, like my car's been sitting here all day today. Um, and you definitely don't have the engine running when you're doing any of this. Okay, so, and you make sure, as I said, that you have your handbrake on and so forth. So now I'm going to put the spark plug lead back on. So these are a bit tricky in my car because they have this spring-loaded thing on them. So you push them in for the end until you hear the click. And then you actually push it on a bit further with the metal. Otherwise, if your lead's not on properly, your car will actually miss and it won't be running on all of its cylinders because you won't be getting the power coming out of the distributor um, down into the... Oh, they're not distributor on my car. What are they called? I forget now. Um, <laughs> coil. Um, coil packs into um, your spark plug leads and into your new spark plugs and that's where you want it to go. Okay, so I think I've got all them in there. So what we're going to do now is pop the air box back in. Oh, I need my little cover there. We'll clean the air cleaner at some point um, in the future. But what we'll do is we'll pick up the air box. And we'll pop this on here first. Like that. And then we'll actually tuck this down in here to make sure... We don't have to pull anything around here, just make sure you get the corners in and jiggle it around a bit because there's probably electrical leads and one thing and another in the road. And if you actually put your couple of clips on, you'll be able to see if your box is in the right spot. That sounds a bit personal, doesn't it? <laughs> um, but I think mine's not because it's not fitting down properly. I think my air cleaner the wiring. Yeah, but I think my air cleaner wasn't sitting properly. We'll go again. So I'll pop this down here. Oh, get in there, will you? There's so many little wires and things. I think it's in the right spot now because the clips will let me pop it in. There's always one obstropolis clip that gets in the road. And I think this is probably it. And you might actually need to get the screwdriver wherever I put it now, down here. Oop. lift it up over I think I've still got something stuck yeah something's not sitting properly something over this side it isn't sitting down flat gets in the road, that's better. Oh, a couple of the clips are a bit tough. I'll get that one with the screwdriver in a little while. As I said, there's always one that doesn't want to play, even when you've got it in the right spot. So I'm just lifting the screwdriver underneath it and watching it doesn't catch my finger. Watch you don't jiggle your growler off <laughs> and the end of the spot. And then I'll screw up my little hose clamp again. And so you're going round clockwise to screw him up. Doesn't need to be super tight, just as tight as you can possibly get it. And just make sure nothing's going to jiggle off and you have to put your little plug back in. Otherwise your computer won't know what your car's doing and that'll be no good. You make sure it's on there, pull it off, try and pull it off to make sure it's fitting properly. 
And then we'll go around to the other side now. So we'll grab a couple of tools and our feeler gauge. And we'll go around the other side and do the other side ones now. And we'll be back in a second. Go. Okay, so we put all our spark, plug lead, spark plugs in and we put all our spark plug leads back on. We've got the air box back in and um, now we're just going to give it a test run to see to make sure it's sounding all right and it's not missing or anything like that where we think we've got our leads on correctly and they're not really. So we just make sure that we clear off anything like our guard and our boxes from our spark plugs which we'll put the old plugs in in a little while. And I'll just duck round the back of Mr Noel and move my manual because I don't need that anymore for the minute. And what we're going to do is we'll come into the car, we'll make sure our whoop, we'll make sure our handbrake is on. <laughs> oh, and we'll find the keys because we're not in the ignition. And you make sure that the car is out of gear because you don't want to run forward. I am actually going to hop into the car and um, and actually sit with my foot on the brake when I start the car. This is an old meeting here, so I have to start the car. You shouldn't put your hand anywhere in the engine.